Good morning, everybody. So glad that you're with us today. We're hoping to have a great day in the Lord today. As always, we want to start off with prayer that God would just reach out and bless and strengthen uh, everything that you're doing in your world today and that you're going to have a great day. We want to continue to remember in prayer all those who are sick and afflicted. I remember all the churches and sessions on the Eastern Seaboard. Those of you that have changed at time zone here in Phoenix, it's still nine o'clock for me. We did not spring forward, fall back, or flop either direction. So we're still right here now. We're part of Mountain Time. Any other time, we're part of um, Pacific Time. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and get started today. Again, if you have a Bible there with you, go ahead and get to Mark chapter 10, and we're going to start there. Father God, we thank you so much for your love, your mercy, your power, your grace, and your glory. We thank you, God, that you hear us when we pray and that you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can think, ask, or even imagine. We pray, Lord, for those who are sick today. Lord, you said that by your stripes we are healed. And I pray, God, for those that are sick that right now they will claim your healing virtue, that from the crown of their head to the sole of their very feet they will be made whole. Like the woman in Luke, woman, man, thou art loose, that every spiritual infirmity physical infirmity right now in the name of Jesus Christ will loose and let go and set them free so that they can lift their hands and worship you. We pray for all the pastors, Zach, uh, Zach Sizemore, Billy Parker, Isaac, and Isaac Walker, Shane Calhoun, uh, Billy Rains, Pastor Trotter, all of those, Lord, of Bishop Lee that are trying to lead revival, Sean and Michelle Brooks, that are trying to lead revival in, for the remnant church today, that today they will get a word, a rhema word from you to trigger revival. And Father, as always, we give you praise and glory as you speak to your people today. And we'll be careful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hey, don't forget while you're watching or listening, if you want to make comments, amen me, wave a hanky, whatever, do that in the comments just so we know that you're listening. We're going to do an old, old Rusty Goodman song, one of my dad's favorites, and it's called Had It Not Been. Just suppose God served through heaven Couldn't find what we The supreme sacrifice that was needed. That my eternal life for you and me. Had it not been for a place called Mount Calvary. Had it not been for the old rugged cross, had it not been for a man called Jesus, then forever my soul would belong. But I'm so he was willing to drink his bitter cup. Although he prayed, Father, let it pass, let it pass from me. And I'm so glad he never called heaven's angels from my hands to torment me had it not been for a place called Calvary had it not been for the old rugged cross had it not been for the man Then forever my soul would be lost Had it not been for a place called Calvary 
had it not been for the old rugged cross, had it not been for that man called Jesus, then forever my soul would be lost. Then forever my soul would be lost. Have you ever thought about this morning that it had not been for him? We would all still be lost and dead in our sins in this world, which is already crazy enough, would just be crazy or er, er, er. If you have a Bible there with you nearby that you can get to or on your device, whatever, go, if you will, to Mark chapter number 10. Mark chapter number 10. Now, this is a story that many of you are going to be familiar with just as soon as I begin reading the text. But what I want you to focus in on some behaviors, on some things that we see in this text that many believers today are going through. And can I just tell you, dear beloved, the enemy has declared war in these last days on the people of God. I know this to be fact. And he wants you and I to both believe that we can't be victorious, we can't walk in faith because of the warfare and that the fact that they have gotten the idea in their head that they can beat us. But can I remind you that you are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. So no matter what the enemy throws at you this week, today, this month, this year, this decade, the, your life, remember that as long as you're in Christ Jesus, you're more than a conqueror. All right, that was free. and pay for that. Mark chapter 10, verse 46. Then they came to Jericho, and as he was leaving Jericho, with his disciples, a large crowd, and a large crowd, a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the road. When he had heard that it was, it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many were sternly telling him to be quiet, but he kept crying out all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. Verse 49, and Jesus stopped and said, call him here. So they called the blind man, saying to him, take up courage, stand up. He is calling for you. Throwing aside his cloak, he jumped up and came to Jesus. And answered him, Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi or teacher, I want to regain my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. Immediately, he regained his sight and began following him on the road. Many of you watching today or who will watch this podcast or listen to it later are living in a time that you need a miracle. You need a healing. You need a financial miracle. In some form or fashion, you need a miracle. And I want you to come into this story with me and see what God is telling you today. He says, first of all, you need to recognize who Jesus Christ is. He would ask this very question. If you have your Bibles and want to, you can go to Matthew chapter number uh, 16. The disciples are up on Mount Hermon. They're looking down at, at where the, the ancients believed the gates to hell were, the gates to the underworld, where the, uh, the ancient gods dwelled. And notice what he says, when they came to the district of Caesarea Philippi, he was asking his disciples, whom do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, but still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you, you? It comes down to who you say he is. Don't take your mama's word for it, your daddy's word for it, your pastor's word for it. You've got to decide in your own heart and settle it in your mind who Jesus is. Peter answered and said to him, you are the Christ, 
the son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock, the revelation of who Jesus is, I will build my church, and the gates of hell, or hot Hades, will not overpower. And he's looking down at what the ancients believed was the gates of hell. He was poking a stick in the eye of the enemy and saying, You'll not prevail over the uh, when my people realize who I am and follow me. He goes, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven, and what you have loosed on earth will have been loosed in heaven. He warned his disciples not to tell anybody yet. You see, you've got to decide, one, Jesus, despite what the world tells you, was not just a good teacher. He was not somebody that came along to tell us how to get along one another with, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, and I love everybody, and oh, and nobody's going to hell. He wasn't a good teacher. He was a good teacher, but that wasn't his only role. He was not just a prophet coming to let the world know that judgment was coming. He is and will always be the everlasting Son of God. Look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 through 11. Therefore, Paul says, God has also highly exalted him and granted him the name above every name in order that every knee should bow at the name of Jesus. Now, I want you to follow the, the progression here. I'm reading from the disciples' literal New Testament, which is a word-for-word -word Greek rendering of the New Testament. So listen. Of heavenly ones, the angels, the ones that are in heaven working for God, the earthly ones, that's us, the humanoids, and the ones under the earth, these are the demons that he would he reserved under the earth in Tartarus for judgment. All of these, even the ones that think they the baddest one, but they the bad, bad Leroy Brown of the angels will bow at the feet and then on their knees and say, Jesus, Yeshua, Yeshua HaMashiach is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Because God's going to let them know he is Lord. And can I just tell you that when you get to that place in your life, you are now adopted. You've been grafted into the vine. You've been clothed in the righteousness of Christ. And you will judge angels. And it is time that you stop walking around and letting the enemy tell you that you serve something that's not real. There's an old song we sing. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. And I know that He is living no matter what men may say. I see His hand of mercy. I feel it's such a grace. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. You see, until you settle in your heart that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. You'll never experience victory in your life because you're living beneath your privilege. You, my friend, are a son or a daughter of the living high God who says beside him there is no other. Oh, I wish somebody would say amen right now. The second thing I want you to see in the story is don't let the opinions or the feelings of other people stop you from crying out. Don't pray. Don't, don't bother God with your problems. Keep quiet your, what your pilly little need is. He's running the universe. You know that sickness is a part of life. The world we live in, the food we consume, the atmosphere. We're all destined to be sick because we live in fallen bodies. Or well, the worst deception of all. You're a beggar. You're not worthy of the master's time. Can I give you some scripture to show you how that's all a lie? Luke chapter 13. A woman had been coming to Sabbath service at the synagogue for over 18 years, bound in a spirit of infirmity. Bound up in this spirit, had her bent over. She couldn't stand up because of how bad her back was. And Jesus saw her. He called her and said, woman, you have been released from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her. And at once she was made straight. And she was glorifying God. You know, yeah, sickness is a part of living. Okay, fine. 
And yes, the world around us will make you sick. But sometimes you've allowed a spirit to grab hold of your body and keep you sick. It is time the people of God stop playing footsie and tiddlywinks and, and, and Yahtzee with the devil and stand up, draw your sword. I mean, draw your sword. Look him right square in his eyes and say, the Bible says that by his stripes I am healed and I may not see it on this side but when I take my last breath here, I'll take my first breath there. We w w walk around in defeat and we act like that's the way to be. There is a song that they used to sing when I was growing up. I never cared for it. And one time my dad and I were having a discussion as to why I didn't care for it because I, I didn't like to play it, didn't like to uh, be a part of it because the verses start off like this. Once again... I faced Satan this morning, and I battled him all the day long. But in my weakness, God sent reinforcements. First of all, if you're going to fight him all day long, maybe you've not learned how to fight correctly. You see, God gave you the graphia, his written word that you're supposed to eat and internalize till it becomes Logos word, that you have instant access to it at any time. And when the devil shows up and starts with this and that and this and that, you can say, wait a minute, but it is written that man shall not live by bread alone. It is written, it is written, it is written. You see, the problem is most of the church, the only time you read your Bible is on Sunday morning when the six-foot icicle gets up there and tells you where to turn. And we wonder why the church, watch this now. You wonder why the church is right now being pushed down by the forces of evil. It's because we stopped being the church. We stopped praying. We stopped fasting. We stopped reading his word. We stopped loving one another. We stopped agreeing with God about what God says is sin. And instead, we have adopted the world's idea of what God means to be in love. I got news for everybody out there. If you don't agree with this, you're wrong. Let me take it one step farther. If you are living a life where your loyalty is questionable, are you loyal to the fallen realm or are you loyal to the kingdom of God? As far as God is concerned, you are loyal to the fallen realm. That's why when we baptize, we remind the fallen realm of their defeat. When you take the Lord's Supper and you've examined yourself, you remind the fallen realm of their defeat and the return, the imminent return of Jesus Christ to claim his bride. So the first thing, you got to settle in your heart who Jesus is. Secondly, don't let other people get in your way. And thirdly, get rid of your past. When they called him, they said, come on, he wants you. He says, he took his cloak. Whoo! I ain't going to be a blind beggar no more because I'm going to the master like a bird out of prison. Thank God I'm free, free, free. And he went to Jesus expecting to cast off the past. Notice what Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 8. But what things were gains to me, and he just talked about in the previous verses, his Jewish pedigree. What things were gains to me, these I have regarded to be a loss for the sake of the surpassing greatness of Christ. But more than that, I am indeed regarding all things to be a loss for the sake of the surpassing knowledge of the greatness of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for the sake of whom I suffered loss of all things and am regarding them as garbage in order that I might gain Christ. He says, look, all the stuff in my past, the good, the bad, and the ugly, it's in the past. I'm throwing that back and I'm focusing on one thing. I'm focusing on Christ. Christ has to be your priority. He tells the church in Ephesus in Revelation chapter 2, you have lost your first love. You, you say, well, how do you know that? Well, you ever, you ever been in love? I'm not talking puppy love. 
I'm talking love. Can I talk to my men, my 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 dogs out there for a minute? You've been going. You you have you've been going out with the boys to the ball games. Uh, maybe uh, whatever the guys do. I don't have any male friends, so I really don't know what all male friends do. But let's pretend we all I have. And one day Jimmy's not showing up, and you wonder where's Jimmy. And then one day you're at the mall, and here stands Jimmy holding a pocketbook, standing outside Victoria's Secrets, and you say, where you been? And he wants to tell you about this woman he's met, that he's head over heels in love with, and she's great, and he can't wait for you to meet her. He is excited. He is in love. Ladies, have you ever met someone that swept you off of your feet, and you couldn't wait to see them, and talk to them, and talk about them, and you know, you're always on, you got the text thing going, you see their name on the caller ID, oh, you get all happy inside. Well, if we do that in the, in, in the physical realm, why is it when it comes to Jesus Christ, we can't tell anybody about him, we don't get excited about him, we don't get excited about worship, we don't get excited about being in his presence, but we're content to just be on the couch next to him and hope that holds. You got to go and tell somebody you're in love with Christ. You know, people are, in this pandemic have stopped going to church and they've given every excuse. I'm scared of the pandemic. I don't want to get the COVID-19s. Truth is, you've lost your first love and you don't want to get with God's people and worship and experience the presence of God. You've got to make Christ your priority. Notice what it says in, going on in Philippians verse 13. Brothers, I do not consider myself to have taken hold, but one thing I do. I remember in City Slickers, you know, Curly, and then he'd go, one thing. And throughout the whole movie, you just want to try to figure out what the one thing is. Okay, Paul going to tell you right now, 2,000 years prior to that movie ever coming out, what the one thing is. You ready? Write it down. Get your notebooks out. Get your, get your pen ready. Forgetting the things behind and stretching toward the things ahead, I am pressing on toward the goal for the prize of the upward calling from God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, now anytime you see the word therefore, you need to go back up a couple of verses and find out what it's there for. Thank you, Papa Hagen. All who are mature, let us be thinking this. And if you are thinking anything differently, God will reveal this also to you. He says, look, the one thing you should be doing is making Christ and the relationship with him your priority. Husbands, he's got to be your number one priority. Wives, he has to be your number one priority. Children, he has to be your number one priority. And if the husbands and the wives have got Christ as their number one priority, he will bring them into alignment and now you've got parents that are righteous, and they'll bring the children up in the way they should go. When we could change until judgment completely falls, the narrative going on in this world. But instead, we're content with what we got. Third thing in this, under this point, tell Jesus what you need. We tell him what we need, not because he doesn't know. But he needs to hear what's in your heart. He wants you to know what's in your heart. 1 Peter 5 and 7 says, Having cast all of your anxiety upon him, because he is concerned about you, your anxiety. We live in a world that is a, a pharmacist dream. We got pills to wake you up, pills to put you down. Pills to get you going, pills to get you to stop. Pills to make you happy, pills to make you sad. Pills to make you want to live, pills to make you want to kill yourself. We've got all kinds of pills. I mean, I, I find it interesting the ones that the, for the depression pills. It says if, if thoughts of suicide worsen, I thought I was taking the depression pill so I wouldn't want to kill myself, but that's beside the point. Give pop another pill. Peter is saying in a time when they were being burned alive for being Christians, thrown into uh, 
uh, coliseums where lions would tear them apart. They'd be killed by the gladiators. He goes, cast your anxiety on him. In other words, quit focusing on what you can't fix, what you can't control, the world around you all, and just cast it to Christ and say, I've got to know that you're in control because he is. The last thing in the story, Bartimaeus didn't go back to being a beggar. It says, and he followed him. Some of you come to church and you pray and you, you get whatever it is you've asked for. God does something in your life. But then once the, the crisis has passed, once whatever is done is done, you walk away. You leave. Can I tell you this morning, God says, follow me. He's calling you. Follow me. You may be saying, well, Dr. Stansbury, how exactly do I do that? It's really simple. Confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord over all and Lord of all. And that God is his Father and he raised him from the dead and gave him a name which is above every name. Confess that with your mouth and believe it in your heart. Repent, that means turn away from the lifestyle you got now. Find a Bible-believing church, not just a church, but a Bible-believing church. There are still some out there. If you need some recommendations in certain parts of the country, if you will email me at pastorstansbury at gmail.com, I will hook you up today. But I believe this. Until we as the church become like Bartimaeus, know who Jesus is. Don't let other people tell us what we believe. Throw off our coats of the past and follow him and him alone. We'll never experience the remnant revival that's coming to the people of God. And I want you to experience revival not only in your life, but through your life. Will you pray with me, please? Father God, we thank you so much for your love and mercy, your grace, your power, your authority. And Father God, I pray this morning that this word this rhema, this right now word that I believe is for somebody will go out with power and with force. And like a nuclear bomb will explode into their spirit and set them free. And for, other, for what I know you're doing, through the words of this podcast, through the words of your, of your servant, I pray, God, that people's lives will today be forever changed. In the name of Jesus Christ, the name above all names, I pray. Amen. If this podcast is a blessing to you or your family or someone you know, would you please drop me a line at pastorstansberry at gmail.com. Subscribe to my podcast. Uh, you can find us in three places, Spotify, Apple, iTunes podcast, and also at Podomatic where they are recorded and stored. Also, uh, within the next few days, I'll be posting a private teaching on the book of Revelation. We'll be starting Revelation chapter 1. Uh, this is going to be probably one of the most different that you've ever experienced as I've been putting the notes together and thinking my way through it because I want to focus not on the heebie-jeebie aspects but the love letter that he wrote to his people to tell them the things that would shortly or soon come to pass so that we are forewarned, forearmed, and able to preach the gospel of the kingdom to all the world. So until next week, this is your friend, Pastor Eric Stansbury, welcoming you to come and join us every time right here at 9 o'clock Mountain Standard Time here in Phoenix, Arizona. If you're ever in the Phoenix, Arizona area, let me know. We'll go out and get a, grab a sandwich or something. All right, until next week, this is Dr. Eric Stansbury saying so long. May grace and peace be multiplied to you and your family. We'll see you next week.